when putting a toy line out for mass retail, it's very important to have gift packs because you want to have an item that can be easily bought for a friend's or a child's friend's birthday. And in Power of the Force 2, this was accomplished through the cinema scenes. It was a great grab and grow $20 value item. You got three figures and a backdrop and usually kind of an accessory base stand thingy made of plastic. And a lot of times it had unique characters you couldn't get anywhere else. Lots of value and it was a perfect way I mean, for kids, value for adult collectors, character selection. Hey, it was a perfect marriage. And while the cinema scenes went away after Power of the Force 2, the concept was brought back with the Toys R Us multi-pack exclusives. This was a series of square boxed figures where you had a clear box showing off all four figures and a larger bonus accessory like a speeder bike or a giant cannon. So in the case of the Bounty Hunter pack, you got four repeat Bounty Hunters and a uh, reissue of Ayla Sugul's Swoop Bike. So if you needed to pick up Bounty Hunters or wanted a good pack for a birthday, and same thing. But for collectors, you also sometimes, like with this pack, Skirmish Cartoon, uh, you could get figures of the Jabba's uh, guards that were difficult to get. This pack was very hard to find in the day. So it was welcome return to see it come back with a unique Han Solo and a reissue of the Sail Barge Cannon. And, well, like I said, it was a unique Han Solo because he was kitbashed between several figures. You can see the video I did uh, previously. So, shocker, we're now up to the second of these four packs, these multi-packs. And again, we're getting four figures, this one being themed Imperial Forces. And we actually get four unique characters. There's definitely some kit bashing and some redecoing, but yeah, they actually are unique, unlike the previous pack, which only offered a unique Han. So let's just take a quick look at who we're getting. We've got a Stormtrooper, we've got a Darth Vader, we've got a uh, ATST or ATST driver, and uh, a unique droid, an astromech droid, and a whole bunch of stuff. Some, <laughs> A uh, rack for guns, a mouse droid, a uh, Dr. Ball got thrown in there, and a web cannon. All right, so let's take a look at the droid first, because it's the most unique. Even though it is a redeco, it is a completely original character that we uh, haven't gotten before. So it's a repaint of uh, the, <laughs> the figure from Power of the, uh, the Jedi. It was the first time we got the domed version of the astromech droid, and so, yes, you could take the version from the Tanaviv, which I think actually was supposed to be an Imperial droid, was it? I forget. Uh, I always thought it was a rebel. And much like the R2-Q5 figure from Power of the Jedi, the Imperial forces give us our first uh, Imperial domed astromech droid. And yeah, the black Imperial droids are kind of few and far between. I think we've only gotten these three. But uh, hey, it was really cool when they started showing up because before this, all we had was uh, rebel astro droids. So great to get, you know, the uh, the Imperial uh, side of that. So we got our R4 version. All right. Vader here, while a repaint is unique because it's classic Vader. This figure was originally released and again, the power of the Jedi line and was done as the Emperor's Wrath Vader. So he had the clear dome, the clear hands with the lightning effects. So here we have the same figure repainted and this happens quite a lot where Kenner will Hasbro will uh, you know continue to use the same mold, but this four pack is the only time we've gotten this mold in a just classic Vader look. The Stormtrooper also unique, so this is actually the combination of two previous Stormtroopers. There's been quite a few done in sort of different choices between arms, legs, and torsos, and in a lot of these multi packs, we've gotten unique versions of the Stormtrooper. So it includes the uh, upper torso from this guy and the lower tor lower legs and. Uh, torso from this guy, and boom, oh, and then the arms from uh, the Sand Trooper. So, yeah, unique Stormtrooper with Sand Trooper arms. And the ATST driver, again, a kitbashed repaint. Now, this one is definitely the most cobbled together of all of the figures, but hey, you know, it's unique and it works for a gift pack, even though we have a better version of this figure as a single card. So, this is a head swap figure much like when we take figures from one line and you know attach a head to another in the aftermarket, well, sometimes this is done deliberately. So the Imperial officer from Power of the Jedi got the head from the Rebel Trooper from Power of the Jedi and an existing ATSD helmet from an accessory pack, and boom, now we have a uh, ATSD driver with kind of googly eyes. And 
even though I would say the version for Power of the Force 2, even though it's got that buff look, I think it's a better figure. I just can't stand that wrinkled look of that Imperial officer buck. And it's kind of funny that we got it as a different figure. Someone's got to get the Imperials in iron. All right, so yes, like I said, we also got the uh, Dr. Ball, the web cannon that's originally from the Deluxe Snowtrooper, the rack that originally came with the power of the Force 2 flashback Stormtrooper. And it should be noted, this pack actually... Um, well, yes, it included this Deluxe Stormtrooper's web cannon. You could find it with both the larger Power of the Force 2 era Stormtrooper blasters and the new Power of the Jedi, smaller Imperial blasters. So there were, was a variant, but you could basically just make this variant if you happen to have additional Imperial blasters lying around and just give one to the AT-ST driver and one to the Stormtrooper. <laughs>